Welcome to the Big Mike Fun Podcast, where you learn about advanced wealth building strategies from real estate investing to creating massive ROI and secure retirement profits. So pour yourself a cup of coffee, grab a notepad, and lean in. Because Big Mike has got the mic starting now. Welcome to the Big Mike Fun Podcast. I'm the Big Mike, Mike Zlatnik, and today it is my pleasure and a privilege to welcome back my good friend of many years, the founder and the CEO of Freedom Founders, Mr. David Phelps, or Dr. David Phelps. Hi, David. Mike, uh, it's great to see you, and uh, I'm, I'm privileged uh, that you did are having me back for another time. So some, sometimes if you don't make a good first impression ask people back so i feel honored and privileged uh, thanks for having me back today thank you david yeah it's uh, your wisdom is 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 kind of uh beyond the average person and l- let's just go back to the basic story uh, how did you start freedom founders we've talked about this i think it's it's a great story uh it's an awesome name and you're providing freedom for a lot of other doctors and dentists. So let's just go to the basics. Just tell folks a little bit about you, your family. Uh, you have a wonderful daughter and you had uh, substantial struggles and the survival. And just just, just very quick introduction of you, your family and, and Freedom Founders. Sure, Mike. Well, Freedom Founders started uh, very organically, meaning I didn't really have a, any real vision for what it might become or what it, what it even was going to be back uh, about 11 years ago, 2010. But that really came out of my, you know, my own story, which again, just to be, keep it tight, I, I went into dentistry uh, as a young person you know, 40, 40 some years ago. But at the same time, I was also got really interested in reading about being a good steward of you know, investing money that someday I would have. And so I was reading books about uh, stock market and read books about real estate. This was when I was in college, Mike, it was back in the 70s. So I was reading books about those and and because I, I was always curious, I was just curious. I wanted to, to learn how to do that. Even though I was gonna be a dentist, I thought, you know, I'll make good money, but you know, I, I need to learn how to, how to invest it. And so the books about real estate made a lot of sense to me. I couldn't really figure out the stock market thing. I didn't like the fact that I didn't really have control there. So it's like, this real estate makes sense. So I convinced my dad, to partner up with me and he had to be the financial partner because I had no money or credit. Uh, but we, we uh, co-invested in a rental property uh, near the dental school in Dallas where I was going to school. And so um, held that property for the, the, the four years I was in school and we split about $50,000 in capital gain profits. And that's what got me started in real estate. I, I, I took that money and I parlayed it into more properties uh, with a lot of leverage, I had to use a lot of leverage because I again didn't have um, uh, excess money at all. So I had to acquire as many assets as I could. Had to learn how to do that the right way. Uh, how to how to how to understand uh, debt leverage and uh, cash flows and tenant management and you know all the stuff that goes into it. But I was young and I had I had I had time. I didn't even have a family then, so it was it worked out for me to do it that way. Uh, going through life and then uh, you know got married and and uh, my daughter Jenna who uh, at age 12 was unfortunately in end stage liver failure. Uh, that was subsequent to her uh, surviving high risk leukemia at a, at a very young age. Uh, and then she also had break breakout or breakthrough um, epileptic seizures for a number of years. And so all the medications she had to take for the, for the leukemia, for the epilepsy, uh, it, it just overrode her liver. And so at a 12 years old, her liver is not functioning. She's, I mean, she might as well have been a 70 year old um, alcoholic, you know, who had been drinking all her life. She wasn't, of course, but uh, that's the same situation. Liver is not functioning. Well, you, you have to get a new liver. There's no dialysis. So when, so she was fortunate that another family was unfortunate, very unfortunate. And they lost their, I think she was 16 years old. They lost a daughter uh, in an automobile accident. And they were so gracious that they had made provisions to allow the harvesting of, of organs from their daughter. And Jenna was the recipient, uh, the beneficiary of, of the liver. Uh, so, you know, we, we are forever grateful for that family that they you know, took a loss and, and that, that provided uh, life to, to other people who could use the organs. And it was when Jenna was going through the recovery after the surgery, and it was long, it was, I mean, you know, you're not in and in, out, in, out in a week, it's, it's months. Uh, and so in the hospital, when I'm there, uh, thinking about really what's my purpose here? What's my purpose uh, for my family? And do, am I supposed to just be working to make money or am I supposed to be actually be here with my family? I mean, I'm saying this is like my wake up call. It's like my call to arms. It's like, all right, David, 
you need to reboot, you know, what you think you're supposed to be doing. So I made the decision right then and there, Mike, uh, in that hospital, I'm going to sell my practice. And within a year, I sold the practice. Uh, I'm out of dentistry. Now, I wasn't magnanimous, magnanimously wealthy. Uh, I was in my 40s. Uh, certainly, you could say, well, that's too early to quit, quit being a dentist or quit, you know, being in business. It really wasn't my focus right then. My focus was I wanted to be with my daughter, but I had enough real estate. So here's the key. I had enough real estate that provided enough passive cash flow that I could float the boat. And that's all I cared about, Mike. I didn't care about having ex excess money or I need, no, I need a few more million dollars before I can quote retire. Didn't care. I figured out I had enough. And that's really how I, how I utilized the freedom number and freedom founders today. So Freedom Founders came out from all this when I had a vacuum in my life. Uh, it didn't happen the same year. It was several years later when other doctors and dentists were asking me, David, we understand why you left your practice because of your daughter. Yeah, totally get it. Makes sense. But like, how did you do it financially? I mean, it seems like that's pretty young. I mean, you know, how did you make enough money to be able to do that? And I said, well, I, you know, all the time I was just uh, systematically learning with discipline how to acquire capital assets, real estate, learn how to manage it learn how to buy it right. Uh, and it built up enough so I could actually financially make this make the segue. So from that small group of people who asked me, David, how'd you do it? I let them piggyback on some of my deals, become my capital investor lenders on some of my deals. But as that the, the demand started to grow, I thought, well, I can't, I can't continue to do this by myself. I don't want to go out and try to create, you know, all these real estate opportunities. I'm, I'm not big enough and I'm not going to build that kind of a company. And so then I thought, well, who do I know in my network, people I've been associated with in the real estate arena for years? And you were one of those, well, you are one of those, uh, and other people that we both know. And I thought, you know, why can't I bring, bring the best of the best together? I can bring the best real estate people that I know, you know, in, you know, in the nation, uh, because I run with those people. And why can't I bring them together with the doctors, the business owners, the people who are busy in their, their businesses, but, but don't have the time? to go out and find good alternative investments like real estate. I don't know, don't have the wherewithal to do it. Uh, and we just create a, a, a forum, a community where we bring the best of the best together. And that's how it started 11 years ago, slowly and added momentum. And as we've grown, um, you know, we just keep adding great people and great opportunities and, and our members are, are getting freedom in their lives like I did at a much earlier age than they thought would be possible. That's the essence of it. That was great. Thank you for giving your life story and the uh, the founding memories of Freedom Founders. And I know where it is today. It, it's a you know it's a greatly transformed community. Uh, you've elevated uh, the game. Uh, it is a phenomenal mastermind. And I I have to say that I belong to a number of these masterminds and groups, and I treasure the most the Freedom Founders. It's the best group that I've seen out there by far. So. Um, kudos to you and, you and your team for all the hard work and putting it all together and, and um, having it a very live, dynamic, constantly evolving um, community. So thank you for putting it together. I thank appreciate you for your that, leadership. Mike. Thank you. So l let's pivot a little bit. One of the really interesting things you said is building uh, your, I guess, investing with a purpose. You've started investing with a purpose. You had uh, a challenging situation, a very difficult situation in your life and you needed to have time with your daughter and you couldn't just work as a dentist and you had to build a passive portfolio and continue to grow it. So this investing with a purpose, I think it's critical. Uh, just it's the big why as well as knowing where you're going. If you don't know where you're going, how, how are you going to know that you got there? So today, I think you do great service, great, uh, I know many Freedom Founders members, and they really appreciate the help to drive them towards the goals. And then they do purposeful investing that winds up building a house they want to live in, investing house, let's just call right. it that way. So any quick comments, any kind of great ideas, what you do as part of the Blueprint Day, how do you get people to take the right steps in the right direction? And all of us are... We, we, We've invested in stock market. We know the stock market, the bond markets, the mutual funds. And one thing I can tell you about that, it has no predictability. Sometimes it does what it does and it does, it produces great numbers. But every day, including today, I worry that the damn thing is so overvalued. Yeah. And I, I can't tell if you follow uh, uh, Charlie Munger, his recent um, comments, is this, the, the damn thing is overvalued beyond anything we've seen right. in a long, long time. Right. So how do you do it? How do you take proactive steps to invest something a lot more predictable 
uh, and and build build yourself a uh, a good passive uh, passive income and a great uh, real estate portfolio. Yeah, well, these are these are the concerns that the people that we know, Mike, that come to Freedom Founders, the hardworking uh, you know, doctors and dentists and veterinarian surgeons, they come to Freedom Founders because they have the same concerns. The problem is that in our society, in our in our financial world, in the quote retirement planning models, the default mechanism has always been. Wall Street, as you said, stocks, bonds, annuities, mutual funds, index funds, uh, that's the default place to go. Well, why? Well, number one, everybody does it. Well, why does everybody do it? Well, look, Wall Street has built a, 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 a big model uh, that, uh, that provides um, a living for a lot of people. And there's a lot of financial planners, advisors, not, say, not saying they're, 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 they're bad people at all, uh, but they make their living selling Wall Street products. It's relatively easy to sell a Wall Street product. It's easy for the, the, the consumer, the investor client uh, to just engage with uh, you know, a financial advisor or they can do it themselves. They can go to Fidelity, Vanguard, Schwab, uh, Ameritrade, whatever, and they can play financial investor because uh, you can click a mouse and make trades and invest in stuff. And, and, and the world says, this is the way you do it. So people find safety in numbers. And if this is what everybody says to do, if their CPA says, yes, you know, you should do this. Oh, by the way, if you, if you put money in a 401k or some kind of retirement plan, not only can you, can you be investing money, but you can be saving on taxes today. So it's all, all this stuff has been set up um, in, in, in the, behind the scenes years and years ago by Congress and Wall Street. Look, there's, there's a reason why these things happen. And I, I'm quick to say to people that, that when you follow the majority rule thinking of, of any group or paradigm, you got to be really careful because the majority's usually wrong. And there's usually some agenda tied to the majority. I see it. I see it in the world everywhere today. And in, in, in the education system today, Mike, is, is, is unfortunately indoctrination to make our young people be workers in a, in a, in a system. And yeah, we need workers, but, but where's the thought? Where's the creativity? So back to the financial model is, is the, the people who, who reach out to, to, to us, to me, to you, who, who say, you know, I'd like to have a little bit more control over my investments. Now, most people are not going to go do it like I did when I was in my 20s, where I actually got on the ground and found properties in my area. That's a way to do it. But if you're busy in a business and you have family and practice, that, well, that's, that's going to be hard to do, hard to repeat. And, and you don't know what you don't know. So the best way I found in life, Mike, to, to, to achieve my goals is to collaborate with other people. I can't do everything myself. As much as I love to control it all, I cannot. I have to learn to find the right people, build trust, build some what we call due diligence. Uh, uh, so we have a basis of, of some integrity behind the, the collaboration we do with some, somebody. But that's what, what, what I do today. I don't go out on the streets like I did 20 years ago and find my own properties. I could, but I, I find I can do much better and with my time, because I want my time. I want my time, just like I wanted with my daughter when she was sick. I want my time. I don't want to give up my time anymore like I did when I was young. So by finding the right people, you're one of those right people. Mike, I, I found a, a real relationship with you when I met you some eight, nine years ago at one of our mastermind groups, very quickly had an affinity for you because I could see, number one, uh, you spent a lot of time uh, in, in being very data oriented, uh, using your background uh, that you have, and also understanding the real estate markets uh, in a big, big way. Uh, and you provide for me and our investors and any investors that work with you, diversification. I want diversification. If I'm gonna go out and try to diversify myself into different asset classes and geographically, oh my gosh, how am I gonna do that? I'll be on a plane to groups and, and I mean, there's no way. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm collaborating with someone like you and leveraging off of what you bring to the table that I don't, you know, can't do, couldn't do, or don't wanna do. And so that's the big piece. And then I'll say one more thing and I'll take a breath is the reason why you and I and the other people in our tribe love real estate, the alternative investment class, is because not that it's not susceptible to economic changes, it is. But we have the ability through, through your insights and people that have their finger on the pulse of, the, of these markets, the inefficiencies of real estate, meaning that big money, big, big money, uh, can't come and control it like it is the stock market. We can, we can slice and dice. We can niche our investments into specific portals because we have access points. 
you you create access points through what you do. You you collaborate with other people. You have you provide the due diligence and you bring that to us. And I can talk directly to you. I can sit down with you. I can call you on the phone. I can't do that with Wall Street Investments. I can't call the the, the bond manager. I can't call the mutual fund manager and, and have a chit chat and say, "Tell me what's really going on behind the scenes." Not going to happen. Not going to happen with you. I can do that. And with a community of people like you, Mike, I have a chance to, to ping pong off of a number of people who also have their finger on the pulse of the markets, the real estate markets, and really discern for myself. So how do I want to hedge? Because it's all about hedging. It's all about hedging, isn't it? Like we have to hedge. We talk about downside risk protection. Nothing's perfect in this world, but I believe, and through my four decades of investing in real estate and gone through multiple downturns, corrections, and recessions, that good, stable, essential real estate, nothing beats it. Nothing beats it hands down. If I want sustainable wealth creation and cash flow, nothing beats real estate. David, thank you. A, a lot of great wisdom in your words. And um, yeah, I, 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 I share the same views. One is uh, your network is your net worth. The community, the network is so powerful. Um, I mean, literally, I can pick up a phone in any market around the country. If I need to reach out to a great member uh, of my network and have a deal and have feet on the ground and do some extra due diligence, it's part of the part of the network. It, it's almost fascinating um, that the uh, the sum of the parts is a whole, is 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 just a lot greater than all the parts uh, individually. So very powerful concept, and for sure uh, the other key benefit. And I think you mentioned this, but the more I think about it, the the, the more we need to uh, disjoint ourselves purely from the market. The market itself can go up. The market itself can go down but the power is in creating value. So yes. part of the community are the value creation real estate entrepreneurs. The value add work is what makes an asset increase in value through that execution. So I think many members of the community and my many projects we invest in are value add projects. And uh, this is by the way, one of the huge difference people have asked this question, what's the difference between your funds and the REITs that I can buy mm on public markets? It's a great question. The simple answer is typically REITs buy already performing assets at a full market price and they right. just cash flow them. In some ways they overpay. They don't even care. They have a problem of deploying a lot of capital. On the other side, what we do is we buy it at a discount. We invest in early stage, take it to value at and, and able to sell it to REITs and realize substantial upside through that. This value as strategy just um, enables let's just call them better risk adjusted returns than what the wall street offers today. So, yeah. And, and, and so, so where would you rather be in, in, in that production line uh, the, of the capital line? Would you rather be uh, investing in the value add portion or you want to be on the retail side with the REITs to, to your point uh, when there's, when there's, when the REITs because of their presence and the amount of capital that comes to them, there's so much capital that they can't be discerning like you can and pick and choose and take slices and participations in different, they just got to take this big wad of money and just get it out there somewhere where, where at least today, you know, it's providing some kind of a, a, a basis return. But as you said, the problem is that, that they have to put that money out there at retail. They don't have the ability to, to, to go wholesale or go to value add projects. They, they don't have the time. They don't have the time for it. There's just too much money. And so if you're investing in a REIT, you're, you're investing retail. And unfortunately, retail is what gets gets clobbered, you know, in corrections. I mean, I mean you're buying at the top, top, top of the market. At least what you're doing is you're buying uh, at, at value add in more wholesale positions. And you're also focusing on the sustainable and predictability of the cash flow. Never guaranteed, but gosh, um, through the thick and thin, the projects that you're investing in are, again, what I call essential. Uh, you, you, people have a, a demand, a use for a roof over their head, uh, you know, in, 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 in different asset classes and different places in the country where you find these projects through your network is where we get to the value to, to go in with you. And, and participate in those. And then the REITs are the takeout. They'll take us out at retail and uh, we do well. And you wanna hope the REITs do well, but again, they're much more volatile, unfortunately. That's right. And, and most of the returns um, that the REITs have realized uh, or many investors have realized purely uh, based on the fact that the cap rates or, or capitalization rates in the commercial real estate have been compressing. People have been just paying higher and higher price for the same cash flow because the interest rates have dropped. But now things are looking a little, 
a little interesting with interest rates climbing yeah. and um yeah, the real estate market today is still looking really, really healthy. What's really amazing is um, COVID, uh, as much as it's a terrible event for the, uh, for the world, it has created really interesting opportunities in real estate. Uh, distressed inventories have been artificially suppressed. I mean, we've seen this with the moratorium on foreclosures. And uh, a lot of capital is now continues to flow into real estate, uh, realizing that it's, a, it's a, the most predictable asset class. There's great still cheap uh, leverage available. And um, the, the opportunity is to uh, ride the inflation wave through an asset class that obviously handles pretty well during the inflation. But let's pivot a little bit. Um, yeah, you have a new book out. What's your next? Uh, would love to, a couple of thoughts on the book, just um, uh, for the folks, if they, they'd like to think about their life and what's their next uh, venture or, or, or their next adventure with the next uh, phase of life. <laughs> I like to crack this joke about uh, there are only four, four phases or stages to life. Of course, it's not true, but I, I just love the joke. It's called the infancy, childhood, adolescence, and obsolescence. But <laughs> it's very different. <laughs> I like that. So let's, let, let, but let's talk about uh, what's your next. All right. So, so thank you. So this, this is the book that I just published. I've got a couple behind me. Uh, you know, I'm, 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 I'm so humbled not to, not to promote the book, but, but look, the book, the book really is, um, it really is, a, it was a passion project for me. Uh, and, and it's really about what I've learned and through my own life story, uh, the, the things that work well, like real estate, but also talking about, you know, how, 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 how I was able to pivot uh, and move from one area of a career path, that being a dentist, uh, to doing something else, uh, because I had the basis of basis of financial freedom. Again, I didn't have all the wealth in the world that I ever wanted, but but I but I had the basis of financial freedom that allowed me to be able to pivot and change or shift. Uh, that I think too many people get caught up in lifestyle. Uh, they get in a career or a business and they, they, they do well or reasonably well. And what's the natural tendency? Natural tendency is to elevate your lifestyle. Well, you want to. We want to. We want to provide for our families. We want to be the strength of our families. And I'm not saying that that's wrong. I'm just saying that that, that lifestyle can elevate so quickly that, that now we're just chasing it. We're chasing it. We're chasing it. And, the, and it's a treadmill that no matter what the income level is, most people never get off of it. Uh, they're kind of forced off of it uh, because they get to a career end because of a health situation or, you know, if they're in a career position, the, their job is, is outsourced. Or that's what happens. And they've never built up a plan B. So what's your next is really a book that has, has financial concepts in it. Uh, I talk about the, the aspects of real estate or a capital asset that works well. But I also talk about, you know, the other freedoms in life that really, really, really want, Mike, when we're chasing money, and again, we have to have money. We have to have money to live on. It's an exchange for the, 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 the lifestyle and the services that we need. But when we're chasing, chasing money, what we really want in our lives, if we think about it, what we really want is what I needed back when Jenna was in the hospital. I needed time. I didn't need more money. I needed time. So I was willing to exchange what I had in capital assets that were producing the income uh, to get time. I, I, did, I, I, I could have made more money if I kept my dental practice, could have made more money, but what was more important to me, time. And too often we put off time with the, pe with the people and the, and the memories to later. Yeah, yeah, you know, the saying is, well, yeah, I'll get to that. I'll get to, as soon as, soon as I get this just right, as soon as my business is operating here, uh, more in the black, or I've got this much capital invested, all right, then, then, I'll, then I'll take a breather, never happens. Why? Because we're drivers, we're, we're, we're humans. Uh, we never want to think about, you know, kind of quitting. It's once we get to here, we'll get to the next level, the next level, we don't stop. We don't stop. So yeah, so getting clarity about what we really want in life, uh, going back to what you, your, your comment about purposeful investing, well, what is the purpose of investing? Is it just to, to stack up as more and more and more? No, for me, it's just to have enough that I have freedom because once you have true freedom in your life, then everything expands, including, including your wealth creation. It will expand. I will promise people, if you will think about this, if you get the book, I hope you do, read the book and get your spouse involved because you've got to have a, a commonality between significant others, marriages, couples, whatever your, your situation is. You've got to be, you've got to have at least a common basis of agreement. What, what is our life going to be about? What is our family about? Um, one person can't do that by themselves. You've got to be together. I wrote the book so it was an easy read that anybody, no matter where they are in life, uh, husbands, wives, young people, 
or people towards the end of their life that, that are trying to figure out what, what's their next, what's their plan, could read it and get the basis of having these discussions. Because until you can have the discussions uh, internally with yourself and with the people you care about, nothing's going to happen. Yeah, got to have got to have some momentum. You got to have some people say, yeah, yeah, dad or mom or whoever. Let's do this because when you've got a vision that everybody gets to participate in and they all see that there's something in it for them, which again, for most of our family, it's not more money. It's what? It's more time. When they see that you're doing something that's going to give them what they want and you still get what you want because you just, we still want the security. We still want, we, we know we have to provide that. But the question of how much is enough is something that never goes answered on Wall Street. The Wall Street is like, well, just keep building it. Build, keep building it. I've got, I've got consultants in the dental world that tell, tell the hardworking dentists, Mike, that want to take their foot off the pedal. They want to at least slow down. Could I bring an associate in? Could I sell the practice? And unfortunately, their financial advisor says, well, you know, you're still healthy. Why don't you just retire in practice? And I'm thinking, what is that? Retire in practice. What they're saying is just work a few more years, work a few more years. Well, just work a few more years. And you know, you've seen it. We have people who come to Freedom Founders who thought that same thing. I got to keep doing this for five, six, seven, ten more years. And through what we do, how we collaborate with people like you, they learn how to orchestrate their capital investments and get them into investments that actually produce the income they never saw before. And now when they see the predictability, they go, oh, they take a breath and go, wow, we actually could sell the practice now. And that's happened over and over and over again. Wall Street financial advisors don't teach us because they can't. They don't have the predictability. We have the opportunity to do this. And it worked in my life, but also we've seen it work in so many other people's lives. This is the key. Uh, so you can have a next. You don't have to stay at the, the, at, the, at the treadmill doing one thing for 35, 40 years. You have the opportunity to, to elevate and grow. Uh, and doesn't mean you have to, quote, retire. I'll never retire, but you get to move on to like to adding value in other ways to people. And I think that's the fun in life is you, we get to grow. We get to elevate. You've done that. You've done that through your life. You haven't been stuck in one thing. You grow. You help more people. You figure out how to bring other people on your team that, that expands your impact. That's the fun part of life, I think. That's what's really fun. Yeah, thank you, David, for 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 for, for that share. Uh, a lot of wisdom, um, and and um, every time I talk to you, it kind of reminds me. And you know, my my kids, I skate, and um, literally last night we had to do, take a long trip. Um, um, my 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 third girl got into a um, one of the best uh, synchronized ice skating teams in the tri-state area, and it's a long drive now. They practice in you know, sort of, not exactly upstate New York, but north of the city in Westchester, they practice in Connecticut. It's a long drive for me from Brooklyn. But I have to say, you know, every time I do this, this is the why, right? The, yeah. the, the, you don't need more dollars. You need more time so you can actually go and drive for, and I can't tell you how much excitement. There's a few girls in the car. So <laughs> <laughs> the three other girls all got into this team. They all got together somehow. And it, it's just... Um, the, the joy of uh, being there with your family and your kids makes all the difference in the world. I mean, that, yeah. that, that helps drive all other uh, purposes and, and, and goals and objectives. And the other thought um, um, is what part of your critical lesson is hurry up, work harder, but slow down, take a step back, think of a little bit about the purpose, why you're doing this. And when, when you do that, uh, what I observe is, Folks learn how to do business better. Not only they practice their trade, but they suddenly able to be a better manager of the trade, a better CEO. Before you know, you now have two or three practices and you're not necessarily working harder, you're working more intelligently or smarter. And I, I think that's, that's been a great service for the community. You've been able to help folks uh, exit their practice or uh, find their next. So thank you for that wisdom. And um, I know we got great Freedom Founders coming up. This episode will come out post the Freedom Founders event. I am just so excited to be part of the community. Looking forward to that. Any final thoughts, uh, any great nuggets, sort of um, advice, or just just uh, another great book to read? Obviously, your book is What's Your Next is, is, is a must read. But uh, any other uh, final thoughts? I think I'd say this, Mike, is, is I, I know a lot of people that are hard workers. They've gone through the education process to get to a certain place in life where they've got an established career, job, profession, business, whatever it might be, is, is that the, the vision of what, what they wanted, I can say the same thing for my life, what, what I wanted, um, it becomes a kind of fuzzy. 
uh, because you, you start you start working in the challenges and and you're not really getting that freedom to spend the time with your family like you wanted to. But so you just think, well, this is the way it's supposed to be. Industry says it. Society says, you know, we're supposed to just work hard. So we, we just kind of give in. And what I see is people that, you know, get kind of start getting burned out and in the, the kind of the excitement in, in, their, in their face goes away. And I, I'm just I'm, I'm seeing Freedom Founders members that have come as couples and burned out, tired, worn out. And as soon as they see there's a plan that has actual real viable hope to, to change the direction of what they're thinking is in their plan financially, and they see this will work, the energy levels change and the inspiration. And I see the couples are actually engaging in conversation that becomes like vibrant again. And that to me is step number one in changing people's lives. It's how we think and what we believe and what we believe is possible. Instead of feeling like, okay, this is just the doldrums of life. And I just got to try to get through to the next step. It's, it's just life changing. And, and that it does me more good to see that happen uh, than anything in the world. That's really why I do what I do. I mean, I just, I, I love the opportunity we have in changing lives. So I would just say uh, there is, there is a, another way. There's a better way if you feel like you're stuck in your life right now and you can't quite make that step to figuring out you know, what your next is and how to move the needle. There is a way. There's multiple ways to do it. I know the way we do it does work. Um, and thank you for, for letting me, let me preach from the soapbox today a little bit. But I do get a little bit impassioned about it. Thank you, David. And I, I just want to kind of just add one small commentary, uh, how you changing lives. Um, so I'm working with one of the Freedom Founder members and they're investing in real estate. And one of the basic things they said that Freedom Founders open their horizons and the possibilities, most high earners pay a lot of money in taxes, just a real basic concept. Mm -hmm. And when they start investing in real estate, most people invest passively, but you do have an opportunity that you can actually go active and become a real estate professional. Real basic idea, not rocket science. It's not for everyone, it's for some people. But if it's the right choice for you and you can make the choice, you're able to save a lot of money in taxes. It's, it's kind of funny, these basic ideas sometimes are hidden and it requires the community like Freedom Founders to have an aha mode, mode, moment to basically realize, wait a minute, I'm enjoying what I'm doing, I'm investing, but can I do these things? actively maybe it's not me maybe it's my spouse yes and when right. it happens oh my god i just been paying all these taxes and now there's a real simple strategy that can help me use depreciation from real estate investments uh to offset some of the gains from business obviously folks need to consult their cpa and 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 <laughs> their tax attorney but assuming they do things properly by the book and they meet all the requirements it's kind of the sky's the limit really brilliant ideas come out so i just wanted to say literally i had this conversation uh, with a member who was just, hey, I didn't even know I could do this. And now I can. So the idea is very simple. And thank you to the community. So thank you, David. Thank you, Mike. Thank you for listening to the Big Mike Fun Podcast. To receive your copy of Mike's How to Choose a Smart Real Estate Fun Book, head to BigMikeFun.com or visit Amazon and type Mike's slot name. Keep listening and keep investing Big Mike style. See you on the next episode.